afternoon and good evening depending on the time that you're watching this um, video welcome to my channel you know this channel is dedicated to teaching and explaining um, chemistry for high school students so like the way i do for my students I start to prepare them for certificate examination from SS1. So you would find these um, classes interesting, whether you're in SS1 or SS2 or SS3. So as far as you've um, completed your basic sciences in your junior secondary, you can actually understand and follow any of um, the subjects so i'll be posting videos here on the um, high school chemistry uh, the focus will be on the um, explaining concepts and calculations and then um, with practicals as well so i'm going to from time to time also show practical demonstration show practical demonstration in the in my uh, from my personal lab okay so the the class that i want uh, that i'm sharing now on the screen is from my blog um, outfit technical world so i'm going to be explaining um calculations using faraday's first law of electrolysis my name is idon receipt artwork okay now um, electrolysis to start with is the use of electric currents to stimulate a non-spontaneous chemical reaction you know there are uh, processes that are not that cannot naturally happen um, by themselves so those are the non-spontaneous processes so you can use electricity to make bring it to pass for example, um, we're told that hydrogen combines with oxygen to form water. So, but then at a point, you may want to separate the hydrogen um, from the water. Assuming you want to produce hydrogen or you want to produce oxygen. So, the process for you to use is electrolysis. Or um, let's assume you're looking for sodium and then um, chlorine. So uh, where can you get these two elements? You just get to um, sea water, and then that's where you find uh, there so you can extract hydrogen and chlorine from sodium chloride. So and then you make use of electrolysis for this. So electrolysis make use of electric current. So the setup has electric um, electricity, a direct current, then um, the electrodes and electrolyte. So um, we're going to focus on the calculations. In this lecture, we're going to focus on calculation using Faraday's first law of electrolysis. Okay, but then these are the applications of um, electrolysis. Production of hydrogen by electrolysis of water. Manufacture of heavy water. You know, um, hydrogen has three uh, isotopes. The normal hydrogen, which is a protein, then the... Um, we have the deuterium and the tritium. So deuterium can actually combine with them um, oxygen to form heavy water. Then uh, electrolysis is also used to extract metals, especially metals that are higher up in the electrochemical series like sodium, potassium, and magnesium and aluminum. So use electrolysis to extract that, which we're going to cover in um, subsequent topics when we are dealing with them. Um, a chemistry of metals okay electrolysis can also be used to uh, produce hydrogen fluorine and then um, produce compounds like sodium hydroxide and then for electroplating like um, assuming you have um, you want to impose um, zinc on the um, steel you know what is process is called galvanizing so what you do there is electro use electrolysis or you want to um, impose chromium on steel to produce stainless steel so that's still um, electrolysis 
Okay, now in Faraday's first law of electrolysis, you know, there are two major laws that explain electrolysis. And these are Faraday's first law and Faraday's second law. So in this video, we're looking at Faraday's first law. And it says that the mass of the substance deposited, that's if it's um, solid or liberated, if it is um, gaseous, at the electrode, that's at the terminals during electrolysis, is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity or the, the charge. So you can state this, from, this um, law in your own way, provided you have um, captured the major point, which is um, the mass or the mass deposited or volume liberated. And then you have captured um, directly proportional and then a quantity of electricity. If you can combine like that, then um, fine you have your uh, full mark so you can paraphrase it that way now it, by the time you read books you see uh, the mathematical expressions for uh, this um, where m is directly proportional to q q is the quantity of electricity then uh, in physics you we you, you learn that quantity of electricity equals to it so q proportional to it and then in mathematics, you know, uh, later on you change the proportionality sign to equality sign. You have to introduce a constant, proportionality constant. So for Faraday's first law, the proportionality constant is um, you use the letter Z. to You can use the letter Z to represent it. And then it has a special name, which is the electrochemical equivalence, you know. Okay. So, um, you know, this topic is there in both physics and in chemistry if you meet this question in physics it's a bit easy to solve you'll be given the electrochemical equivalence or you have to calculate that but when you are doing this topic in chemistry it gets a bit messy for you to be able to calculate it that is why i've um, been able to come up with a formula that can help you do that so we're going to try this formula on a couple of um, um examples okay so the formula is the mass that's the the mass of substance deposited at the electrode equals to the quantity of electricity and you know quantity of electricity is current times time the current is in ampere and then the time is in seconds okay you so you take note of that while this capital m is the molar mass of the substance that is deposited okay and then um the f here is the number of farad and how the uh, an easy way to get it is just look for the valency the valency of the element deposited okay so that becomes the number of farad and this one is the is a constant okay so this formula you can use this formula to tackle a whole lot of problems so immediately if when you're asked to calculate the mass deposited you just know that oh it's faraday's first law you understand so then the faraday's first law was the formula you can fall back to this m equals to it times capital m all over capital f then times this all right then um what if you are asked to calculate the volume liberated that's in terms of um, gas okay gases a gaseous um, substance so you modify the formula for mass so in place or uh, in place of mass deposited you put volume liberated then um, everything remains the same then in terms of in place of molar mass you put molar volume then the good news here is that um, all gases have the same value for their molar volume okay and the value is 22.4 be it hydrogen be it chlorine be it um, um, carbon four oxide so you use this formula as the, uh, the molar volume all right let's get to examples example one calculate the amount of um, copper metal that can be generated with uh, 300 coulomb of electricity now coulomb is unit for um quantity of electricity okay so now by the time you look at this question mm, we have not been um you know I, the other formula uh, we are asked to calculate mass use it but then the reality is that um, 
at this level you should be able to understand the concept very very well not just memorizing it you know so the question can be a bit twisted so that to really test if you really 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 understand the concept okay all right so um how do we play around that we are asked to calculate the amounts then what have you been given you've been given the um quantity of electricity you've been given the quantity of electricity okay now let's get to the formula and see so at the formula here we have the mass equals to this then uh, we are looking for amount and then um, you know that amount is number of moles okay which equals to reacting mass all over molar mass okay so we have reacting mass at the left hand side we have molar mass at the right hand side so if we divide both sides by molar mass it will now take the the molar mass to the left hand side okay let's see how that goes it takes the molar mass to the left hand side okay 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 so so you see it here this molar mass to left hand side then we no more have molar mass at the right hand side again so then this mass of our molar mass gives you the the mole which is the amount then in the question we're not giving the current and the time so uh, we'll be given the the quantity of electricity so because of that we now convert this it to q all right so with that we are good to go all right so now um a q we pick q from the question which is the quantity of electricity and is 300 coulombs you put it here then the number of farad now copper the valency of copper is two you understand now um if you check the electrochemical series you see all the 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 major elements line up there with their valency okay so by the time you work with this um, over and over again and um, most of these um, um concepts will just become natural to you so you don't really need to memorize okay so this is um two positive so we use that as the number of farad here and this constant by the time you divide you have the number of moles to be 0 0.00155 moles okay so that is that so that's how you use the formula there to calculate the a, amount that's the number of moles so you can actually calculate any parameter here by just doing change of subject to formula you can calculate calculate the current you calculate the time and then you can even calculate the molar mass or you can calculate the number of farad okay let's check another example example two says what is the time needed to deposit 25 grams of silver from a solution of silver nitrate at two ampere okay then uh, you've been given the molar mass of um, silver here so what are we to calculate time so we now go to the formula this is the formula and then uh, you have to make time the subject of the formula so how do you do that you just cross multiply a um, mass reacting mass times this you see then um, this numerator times one okay so you have this so the next thing is that uh, we are looking for t so you look for uh, look at all the variables that are surrounding t which are current and the molar mass so you divide both sides by current and molar mass all right so this divide by current and molar mass this divide by current and molar mass so current and molar mass cancel out here you have time left you understand okay so you now have your numerator here then denominator becomes current and molar mass all right so um for silver the number of um, charge or valency of silver is one so we use that as the number of farad here so by the time we now do the substitution m which is the mass deposited 25 okay then um current um um where is it um okay the the number of farad which is one this charge here you put it here and then um, the 
the constant here then divide by divide by the current which is um, 2 ampere you put it here and the molar mass of silver you get it there okay all right so by the time you now substitute that you multiply this you have this for the numerator you multiply this you have this for the denominator you divide now when you are using this formula take note the answer you would get um, the time you get to be in seconds you understand the time you get to be in seconds if you are calculating mass calculating for mass the mass you get to be in grams okay so this is the time in um, those very long digits that's 11,000 seconds which you can quickly convert that to minutes by dividing by 60 and you have 486 minutes which you can further convert to hours by dividing it by another 60 and then um, that gives you three hours okay so look at that so that's how we get the time from this question okay example three example three says calculate the mass of aluminium deposited during the electrolysis of molten aluminium chloride by passing 193 ampere of current for 500 minutes then you are given the molar mass of aluminium all right so let's see what are we to calculate mass okay i think this one looks a, a bit straightforward i hope so okay um let's see by time we now have this we are to calculate the mass let me put it as so you can see both the question and the steps that we are going about solving it okay we are to calculate the mass so good news is you don't have to do change of subject or formula so you just use the formula direct okay now let's see if the parameters all the parameters have been given we need the current and current is given to be 193 ampere we need the time and then time is given to be 500 good news we are giving the time bad news you need to convert you know the time is not in the, the unit that you have to use the si unit so the time has to be in um, seconds so for you to convert 500 minutes to seconds you multiply 500 by 600 by 60 okay so that gives you 30,000 seconds then um, what else um the molar mass has been given here to be 27 and then um, the one last thing is the number of farad which is the charge on aluminium okay the charge on aluminium and then um, aluminium is al charge on aluminium the aluminium is three positive and then that gives the number of farad to be a three okay so everything is there ready so all we just need to do is substitute you put this here you put this here put this here put this here and then multiply through and divide and you have the answer there in grams all right all right then um, the last question he says um okay, hold on please it says calculate the volume of oxygen gas at the anode during the electrolysis of acidified water when a current of 0 0.2 ampere is passed for one hour 30 minutes okay like um, this particular example can easily be done in um, any um, high school chemistry lab i do this with my students um, using Hosman apparatus so um, they are not actually um, they are not actually abstract things you know chemistry is not abstract chemistry is everyday life everything that 
you having around happening okay so you try to um give it some scientific explanation and then those explanations can be used for discovery those explanations can be applied in different fields and in everyday life okay so what are we to calculate we are to calculate the volume of oxygen liberated here in this uh, um, process okay so since it's, uh, we now look um is oxygen a solid um is it liquid oh it's gas okay so we use um since it's gas and we have to calculate the volume so we use this formula for volume now let's see if we have every other parameters um current is here current is 0 0.2 ampere the time is given to be one hour 30 minutes oh i think that's beautiful you know um a, a unit like this questions like this makes a whole the whole thing very beautiful you know if a question is just too straightforward and you believe me it can be so boring you know but then when uh, for a question you need to think you need to reason you need to recall everything that you have known from your nursery school till date I think that's the beauty of question and then um, solving question okay so all right let's see how we convert this um one hour 30 minutes to seconds okay so a uh, very simple what we'll do is that we convert from hour to seconds and then the hour part to seconds then the minute part to seconds then we add the two okay so the hour part we to convert from hour to seconds you multiply by 60 times 60 so the one hour to seconds is one times 60 times 60 okay i hope you got that all right so then um, to convert from 30 minutes to seconds you said 30 times 60. so with that we've gotten the hour part to seconds and then the minutes part to seconds so we now add so that gives us a total of 5,400 seconds. Okay, is there any other thing to be done? We've gotten the, the current, the time. The molar volume uh, for all gases are the same. So for oxygen, we use 22.4 dm cube. Okay, then um, now the, the next thing is getting the number of farad. Okay, number of farad, which is the charge, the valency now oxygen oxygen is in group six of the periodic table and you know group six elements like oxygen the for group six elements their valence electron is um six so they need two electrons to com to complete the octet state the octet orbital okay orbital state so um that means the charge on oxygen is two since they they need two electrons so the charge there is two okay so that would have been the number of farad for oxygen but then oxygen does not exist naturally as a as a mono atom or as one atom so a oxygen molecule is in um uh, is two atoms that make a molecule so we say o2 so like the oxygen we breathe we're just breathing in O2, 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 O2 you get, okay? So it's just um, a whole um, a large amount of O2 that's um, strolling into your nostril, down to your lungs, your volia, like that. So it's O2. All right, so because of that, we are going to multiply the valency of oxygen, which is 2, that's 1 atom of oxygen is two one valence atom of one valence, um, valency of one atom of oxygen is two then for the molecule which is o2 we say two times two so that gives the number of farad to be four okay so we're going to use the four here all right let's do the substitution um current uh, where is it 0 0.2 here you drag it down here all right then um, time that we converted 5400 you drag it down here okay then a molar volume you drag it down here 22.4 and then the number of farad which is four you drag it down here all right and then this um constant 
So by the time you do that, you get this as answer. And also take note, the answer you would get from this formula, the unit is in dm cube. And when we say dm cube, we are talking about liters, you know. If we say 4 dm cube, we are talking about 4 liters. 2 dm cube, 2 liters. Okay, you get. Alright, so the unit you have, the volume you have will be in dm cube, which you can conveniently convert that to cm cube by multiplying by 1000 okay and then you have 62.7 cm cube and also you should also know that um, cm cube is the same unit as mil milliliter okay so you take note of that okay so we've been able to state the faraday's first law of electrolysis we've been able to say faraday's first law of electrolysis then we've been able to provide equation that you can use to calculate the mass of substance deposited and then um, also to calculate the volume of substance if it's gaseous liberated then we've been able to perform calculation um, using amount calculating for time calculating for mass and calculating for volume all right so to keep you company you are to do this classwork so um follow the principle we have done we have used and then do this two classwork and then um, send in your answer in the comments section send in your answer in the comment section then i would go through and then um, I'll, I'll do correction you understand okay so if this video was useful to you which i believe it was share it with friends subscribe to it free and then um, so that whenever i post anything you would be the first to to be notified all right thank you very much and then do have a lovely time bye